used to doing this in case you notice. <laughs> um, I'm filling in for Margie Ellison and keep her in your prayers because she's been sick for an entire week and still not getting too much better. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that if you do not receive the electronic newsletter and would like to, uh, that's where all of our uh, information about the church and what's going on uh, is is in. And um, if you just give me your email address, I'll put you on the list. And also the online worshipers, if uh, you want to go to our website and at the top you'll see uh, uh, in red uh, information, click on it, and then there's a week weekly update and you'll be able to sign up for it there as well. Uh, there will be a celebration of life memorial for Myron Yonker, which is the father of Mark Yonker, next Saturday morning here at the church in the chapel at 9.30. And all, uh, all are welcome. There's also more information about that in the uh, newsletter. Let's see. Next Saturday, also at 2 p.m., is the Grinchmas party. And uh, what I've been told is that the Grinch himself will be here. And we're going to have uh, the Grinch story told. We're going to have games, crafts, treats, and a raffle with lots of, lots of Grinch, Grinchy prizes. Pass the word along and... Uh, if you're on Facebook, please share, uh, please share this event. Uh, next week is going to be busy. Next Wednesday evening, uh, actually, the town of Speedway called and asked the church us to participate in their night, light the night on Main Street, and we had uh, provided s'mores uh, at the community day event they had. So they want us to come back and pass out s'mores. So of course we're gonna do that. Um, the event is from 5.30 to 7, and if you would like to join us in, at the s'more station, we could use your help. Just let me know. Okay, we're almost there. Um, <laughs> if you haven't ordered uh, your Christmas gifts for our three local families that we are sponsoring this year. Please do so soon. We have um, a Amazon wish list that is uh, through the newsletter and should be on our website. Uh, and the last date to order the gifts are, is next Sunday, December 11th. And that's really just because we want to make sure everything gets here by time to deliver because there's been shipping delays. And there are 40 gifts left uh, on that list. Uh, we also are accepting monetary donations as well because not all of the gifts can be ordered online. So if you'd like to uh, contribute in that way, that would be awesome. Just make sure you mark it for uh, Christmas gifts for the families. Last but not least are the poinsettias. This year you'll, you will have the choice of a live or an artificial uh, poinsettia. They're each $10. Uh, all the live poinsettias must be taken uh, after the Christmas Eve or Christmas Day service. You may also take your artificial plant or you can uh, donate that to the church. And the deadline, deadline to order those are, is December the 13th. And they're also, uh, when you order those, you may um, order one in memory of a loved one or in honor of someone or just to the glory of God. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see you all. Um, I'm wearing a couple hats this morning. The first one is the trustee hat. I am so overwhelmed with the gifts of monetary that I have received towards the chimney. I got a donation this morning 
and that brings us up to around six thousand dollars that has been donated to the chimney and i can't thank you all enough for that now the second hat is the financial secretary and i'm here to do a plea for the budget that we have i know all of you probably have some kind of a budget that you work with and with your expenses, and that's what the church does. We, uh, when you do a pledge, that's how we budget our money for the church. So I'm asking that if you can make sure that you get your pledge fulfilled, or if you have any extra, that would really help us out a lot. But in order to meet the pledge and our budget this year, we really need your help. Um, we, uh, are running a little behind of course so if you can help out that would just be really thankful um, if you want to know if you have a ple if you've pledged and you want to know if you have any leftover or you're not meeting it let me know I can certainly help you with that I can uh, do a statement for you but um, I just want to thank you for the chimney and Thank you for helping out with the budget, too. God bless. Lots of activities going on here. It's such a busy time of year. Lots of things to consider, lots of ways that you can serve and help. So thank you, Sherry, and thank you, Carol, for giving us those opportunities. This morning, our worship focus is on the promises of our coming again king. The promises of our coming again king. From Isaiah, on that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him and his dwelling will be glorious. What a promise that is this morning as we prepare to worship. Oh, Lord, Please. 
praise God this morning for the blessing of being in the sanctuary, being in the house of God. We're here for the purpose of worship, to magnify the Lord, and to lift up his name. How many of you love the Lord this morning? You love Jesus? Amen. Amen. I just love Jesus. He is so good to me. We want to pray this morning as we go into worship. I want to remember the Mark Younger and his family and the passing of his dad and, of course, Chris and her family and BJ and his family as well. Gene Morris has uh, recovered from a fall and Justin Ogden, uh, the son of Sheila Ogden, is going through a difficult season. The family of Errol Hefner, friends of mine who passed away. So we want to pray that God's grace and mercy will be with them, and we want to welcome God into the sanctuary. The Bible says, enter his gates with thanksgiving, come into the courts of the Lord with praise, be thankful unto him, and bless his name, for the Lord is good. Amen. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures unto all generations. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. There is nobody like our God. We worship him this morning. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, will you? <laughs> Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name. We honor you, the long expected one, oh God. We honor you and your presence in this place. We prepare our hearts, oh God, as we prepare for the way of the Lord. We honor you, O oh God, for your presence and your power and your glory. We worship you in the beauty of holiness. And out of our spirits, we pour forth our heart, O oh God, in thankfulness and gratefulness for all that you are and all that you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, O oh God, that you are our God. Hallelujah. And thank you for another day. Thank you, O oh God, for this day, the day that you have made. It is a day of salvation. It is a day of rejoicing. It is a day, O oh God, where we exclaim your name, for you are great and greatly to be praised. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We magnify you. We ask God this morning that you would fill this place with your presence. May every heart sense that you are here, O oh God, and that your presence is here. May the love of Christ flow from heart to heart this morning. May we all, oh God, be engulfed into your love. May we be raptured by your presence this morning. May the Holy Spirit have its way in our lives. May your word, oh God, encourage us, build us up in the faith. We ask, oh God, that you would look on Mark this morning and his family, on BJ and his family, and Chris and her family, oh God, on the Hefner family, may you, by the power of your spirit, grant, oh God, peace to them, comfort through the power of your Holy Spirit, surround them and embrace them in your love. Let them know, oh God, that you are always presently there to help in their time of need. We ask, God, that you would look on Justin Ogden this morning and, God, that you would touch them for Gene Morris, that you would heal, Lord, give of your spirit this morning that they might know. And of all those, oh God, who are here in this place, there are many requests upon our hearts, God, that are not mentioned, but you know every thought, you know every burden, you know everything about us. For those who are watching online as well, God, you know every geographical location. There is nothing that is hid from you, for we are open and naked through him for whom we have to do. Father, we ask for your grace and your mercy, your kindness toward us, Lord Jesus. May you touch, may you deliver. May you encourage, God, may you build up this morning. May you, oh God, be glorified in the midst of your people. And may your name be exalted in this service, God, that you may be exalted above every God, above every circumstance, above every situation. Your name, oh God, to be glorified. We worship you this morning. We give you praise. God, we honor you. We pray together this morning as you've taught us to pray. We now say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. 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 Now greet somebody in the name of Jesus. Somebody near you. Praise God, praise God. God is worthy of our praise, is he not? Amen, amen. 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 Prepare the way of the Lord. For well, as we uh, observe Advent today, we have our candle lighting, Annette Beck and Kathy We need to pray for Annette as well because oh. she's not here yet. Oh. So I'm singing. <laughs> yeah, you're not. You're not Annette. And I, I know that. And I got shorter, lighter hair. <laughs> <laughs> Please listen as we read the scripture that um, is from Mark 1, 1 through 4. In the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ, the way. May the word sent from God through the prophets lead us to the way of salvation.
Good morning, and please join me in our worship psalter, reading our wonderful words from Isaiah. Then a shoot will grow from the stump of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. His life will be in fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But he will judge the poor righteously and execute justice for the oppressed of the land. He will strike the land with a scepter from his mouth, and he will slay the wicked with the breath of his lips. Righteousness will be a belt around his hips. Faithfulness will be a sash around his waist. The wolf will dwell with the, with, the fam, with the lamb, and the leopard will glide down with the goat, the calf with the young lion, and the fattened calf will be together, and a child will lead them. The cow and the, and the bear, bear will graze. Their, their young ones will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like cattle. An infant will play beside the cobra's pit. And a, to a toddler will put his hand into a snake's den. They will not harm or destroy each other on my entire holy mountain. For the land will be as full of the knowledge of the Lord as the sea is filled with water. On that, On that day, day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his dwelling will be glorious. Thank you, dear Lord, for these wonderful words from Isaiah to know that we had this hope long before Jesus came to earth. These words gave that promise that he would come, and he did. That hope was from long ago. That hope was fulfilled and is still with us today. Thanks be to God. your hearts with for the great thanksgiving Lord's Supper. The liturgy that is before us. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. And with all of With these words, Jesus says to his disciples, Come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly, and you shall find rest for your souls. It is an invitation to us. Therefore, we make confession of our sins before God, our Father, and one another in the name of Jesus. You are forgiven. Let us pause for a moment of silent reflection as we reflect on the goodness of the Lord in our lives. We pray this prayer of confession together. O God and Father of mercy, we confess that we have not always loved you with all our hearts. We have failed in many ways to be obedient children of your church. We have not always obeyed or fulfilled the directives of your will. Many times we have broken your commandments by willfully walking in rebellion against the current of your steadfast love. In response to our Christian duty, we have not always shown love toward our neighbors, nor have we listened to hear and respond to the cries which originate from their needs. 
Yet we plead, hear our cry for forgiveness and restoration. To the spirit of joy-filled obedience, grant us your pardon and give our hearts a desired love for you above all things and a renewed love for our neighbors that is equal to the love we have for ourselves. In the name of Christ our Lord we pray. Let us give thanks unto the Lord. It is always right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and always in every place to give thanks unto the God most high, to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so with the people on earth, we now join that heavenly hymn as we sing before the Lord. Holy, holy, you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. You anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and give the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and abused and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. Jesus, you healed the sick, you fed the hungry, you ate with sinners. By the baptism of your suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from the power of slavery, sin and death and made with us a new covenant by the water and spirit. When you, Lord Jesus, ascended, you promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night which you gave yourself up for us, you took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to your disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, you took the cup, gave thanks to the Father, gave it to your disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood, blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Christ Jesus, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of the faith in song. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hear our prayer this morning, Lord, and pour out your spirit on these gifts of the fruit of the vine and the bread. Make them be for us, O God, the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be the body of Christ, the church, in this world redeemed by your blood and extending that redemption to all of humanity. We ask God that you would bless us this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit and pour out your Holy Spirit on us who are gathered here as we prepare our hearts. Make us one with Christ. Make us one in the ministry of Jesus Christ and make us one as a church until you come and we sit with you at that heavenly blanket banquet and God be at that dinner table where all your people will be welcome. We ask in the name of Christ, giving glory and praise to you, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. This is the body of Christ broken for us. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for you and shed for many for the remissions of sin. Blood of the covenant, amen. amen. The ushers will direct you as they come forward. You 
will be able to take bread. There is fruit of the vine if for those who would like to kneel at the altar. <laughs> of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ broken for you, may you take and eat together and drink together, and Christ be glorified. broken for you. May you eat together and drink together. May the Spirit of the Lord strengthen you. You are forgiven. body of Christ that is broken for you, and you take of the body of Christ and the blood of the covenant of grace, know that you are forgiven in Christ's name. Let us drink together. Holy Spirit, we pray that you strengthen the body of Christ, the sense of belonging to you, the family of God. United in Christ, in Jesus' name. As you've taken of the body and the blood of Christ this morning, may you realize that you are an heir of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Be strengthened in the body of Christ this morning. of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, and the power of his spirit be within you. Have mercy on me. Let us pray together on our Let's pray, pray together. 
hear our prayer, Father, this morning. May the power of your spirit, O oh God, renew us as we are part of the body of Christ, bone of your bone, spirit of your spirit. May the blood of Christ, God, establish us in this grace. May, O oh God, we have access to you. In Jesus' name. to be in the house. 
house of God and delighted to worship with you today. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. God is good. Amen. As we uh, prepare our hearts this morning, we want to uh, lift, uh, well, pray over the offering. Uh, thank you for all those who were given. Praise God from expression of our gratitude and thankfulness for all the blessings you've blessed us with. In obedience, O oh God, we bring forth a tithe and offering a gift for the kingdom of God and for the edification of the body of Christ here and beyond. We ask your blessing upon it as you have received it, God. May you return even unto our foe a hundredfold as we have prayed and asked and believed you for those things. We give it unto you willfully and with a joyful heart in Christ's name. Of the Lord, make rich in that new sorrow with it. Praise God. Well, today's meditation is prepare the way of the Lord. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, uh, key verses, verse 3. Will you stand with me as we read the narrative of the text this morning? In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the way of the Jews, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of Now John was... Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord, and we ask, God, that you would speak to us and speak through us by this word. May you encourage the faith of all of us, your people, O oh God, dedicated for your service, living out, God, of your grace. We ask it in the name of Christ, giving glory, praise, and honor to you, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Title of our meditation this morning, Prepare the Way of the Lord, verse 3, is our key verse. This is the voice. Uh, he is the one to whom Isaiah the prophet spoke when he said, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. It has been my custom to read three passages or three translations of this text, and so we will do that this morning again. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophets, Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. The same John came, the same John had his raiment of Campos hair, and a leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. He went out to him, and there went out to him, pardon me, then went out to him, Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around Jordan. King James. The Common English Bible puts it this way, the ministry of John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the desert of Judea. Announcing, change your hearts, your lives, and lives, 
he comes, here comes the kingdom of heaven. Let me read that again. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the desert of Judea, announcing, change your hearts and lives. Here comes the kingdom of heaven. And he was the one whom Isaiah the prophet spoke when he said, the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. People from Jerusalem and throughout Judea and all around the Jordan River came to him. The Amplified puts it this way. The preaching of John the Baptist. In those days, John the Baptist appeared preaching in the wilderness of Judea along the west side of the Dead Sea and saying, repent, change your inner self, your old way of thinking. Regret past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is the one who was mentioned by the prophet Isaiah when he said the voice of one shouting in the wilderness prepare the road of the Lord, make his highways straight, level, direct. Now this John had clothing made of camel's hair and a wide leather band around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. And at that time Jerusalem was going out to him and all Judea and all the district round about Jordan. That's the word of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. I don't know where to start this morning. I was kind of off my game. But let me get started. First of all, even by antiquity standards, John is just weird. I mean, he, he is weird, but that's the nature of prophets. It, the nature of a prophet, you know, there are people who call themselves prophets of the day, and I'm not against the prophetic ministry. I think the church suffers because we have rejected the prophetic ministry. It, it, you might wonder about that, but there's a five-fold ministry gift out of the book of Ephesians that Paul writes about. God gave some apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. He gave these ministries for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, we have pastors, and we welcome them, but all the other ministries, we seem to think that they've done away with. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm not here to argue whether there actually is an apostle. I'm just saying, if we don't have these ministries, here's two things. The church is not perfected, and the work of the ministry is not done, so we need those ministries. Particularly, we need the ministry of the prophet because the prophet describes for us where we ought to be. The prophet has a, a, has a visual of a future happening. The prophet speaks to not that which has happened now, but that which is going to happen. The prophet in the church is to give the church direction. We need the ministry of the prophets. In fact, throughout the, the, the writings, particularly here in Matthew, beginning with chapter 2, you will find out that there, there are words like this. And, and this, this saying, this happened because of the saying of the prophet. This is the exact thing that he says about Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied there would be a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. It is the essence of the prophet that gives the church direction, that lets us know that we're going in the right pathway. But he's weird. I mean, this guy has camel hair for his clothing. Everybody else is wearing robes, but he's wearing camel hair. He's got this leather belt around his waist. I mean, what, what is that about? And, and then his diet. I mean, his diet is really weird. I mean, how many of you like bugs? I really don't. I just don't. But this guy is eating wild locusts and, and honey. And, and you know what it takes to get wild honey? I mean, you know, those bees are not friendly. He's weird. But because of his weirdness, because of him being not in conform with the rest of the society, he begins his preaching, and he's preaching, repent. Now, now I know that's not a word that most churches, in fact, that most of the time they will tell us, you know, those are words we need to leave out. In fact, there, there, there's, there's someone has written uh, 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 
things that you need to do uh, for church growth and to plant a church and to make sure the churches and, and, and you know they say to well take the crosses out of the church <gasps> really I mean let, let me clarify we're not to worship the cross the cross is a symbol of Christianity but did you not know the cross is a curse I mean the Bible even speaks of curses as everyone who hangs on a tree on a cross Jesus took our curse. And even the emblems that we wear around our neck, we wear these crosses. But, but, but this, is not, this, this was not a positive thing. It's a positive thing to us because it identifies us. And then they say, well, you know, we should take out words like repentance and sin. We shouldn't use those words because, you know, people, they get confused. Well, the Bible says repent. And, and I know that the church, the church world overall, has dictated a sense of, uh, you know, suppression and repression on people in this essence of repentance. I mean, it, we, we have done the, the history of the church. We have, we have done this. We have told people how dirty they are, how, how bad they are, how sinful they are. And we, we've given them all these bad things, and then we, we, we've kind of uh, corralled them with, the, with this sense of, of repression, and, and, and here's what you need to do, and here's what. And so we, we've lorded it over people, and, and they felt so condemned. And, and consequently, they don't come to church anymore. I mean, who, who comes? A dog will run away from you if he's mistreated. An animal will get away from you if you mistreat them. And, and people, the animalistic nature of us all, we don't like to be mistreated. None of us like to be browbeat down with, this, with these words of sin and, 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 and all these things. We don't like that. And so no one wants to talk about it. But the Bible says, repent. I was looking this up in Webster's Dictionary, and, and, and basically the dictionary says having a remorse about one's sinfulness, about one's actions, about one's words, things that you have done that you don't feel good about. And, and, and I can agree with that, but that is not the essence of biblical repentance. Biblical repentance is not only having a remorse about it, but it's about doing something about your remorse. And here, John begins to preach this thing, and he says, and, and, and by the way, we did not read verse 6. We read five verses, which is what we normally do on a Sunday morning. But, but verse 6 says, he was baptizing them unto repentance. And the essence of what was happening is that as, as, they were, as they were coming to John, confessing their sins, he began to baptize them. The, the nature was, I'm going to baptize you, and this is a testimony of your repentance, of the change of heart that you have. And they were just coming to him and coming to him. And, and the narrative text goes on to read, but when he saw the scribes and the Pharisees come, oh, John got, oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You religious folks, because religious people don't think they need to repent. I mean, after all, I was born in church. My mother took me to church. I mean, I went to church in the womb. Yeah, that don't make you a Christian. And the nature of being born in a Christian home and having a Christian mother and a Christian father does not necessarily make you right with God. And even after you get right with God, repentance is for God's people. We, we quote this scripture out of Second Chronicles 7, 14, uh, 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 that, that, that says that if my people which are called by my name, and we miss the essence of the first verse of the, of the first part of the, part of the verse. If my people, we want to quote that to the world. America needs to repent. The church needs to repent. The people of God need repentance. We need a change of heart and a change of our conduct. So he's preaching. He's preaching this message of repentance. And he is, he, he is expressing this message of repentance. And here's the nature of our text. In those days, John the Baptist was preaching in the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is a lonely place. It's an isolated place. And most people don't live in the wilderness. I mean, we want to live in the city. E even us who are farmers by choice, we still want to live around civilization. I mean, nobody goes to the Sahara Desert to live. That's just not a place you want to be all the time. I mean, the water is scarce. First of all, the sun is hot. The nights are cold. And there's nobody there but you. 
You don't want to live there. You might want to visit there. You might want to enjoy what beauty that you can find there, but there's not going to be much beauty. Wilderness is, is places that most people don't want to be. And there's the essence in the narrative of the text of the wilderness and experience. It, 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 just hear me out. Jesus was driven by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. That's what you find in the wilderness. You find trial and test in the wilderness. And psychologically speaking, we all have a wilderness experience. In fact, if you are a believer and you've never had a wilderness experience, you need to hang on. Because if you're really going to live your faith, there's going to be a time that you're going to find yourself in a wilderness place where you think God is not there. But by the way, God is everywhere. The psalmist says, where can I go from your presence? Where can I flee from your presence? Wherever I go, if I took the wings of the morning and dwelt among the uttermost parts of the sea, you're there. If I made my bed in the grave, you're there. God, presence is everywhere. But you will be in a wilderness, and psychologically speaking, you will think that God doesn't care about you, that he is nowhere around, that he is not concerned with you at all. Let me tell you this. God is everywhere, and he's always concerned about you. But the wilderness experience gives you the ability to find out basically who you are and who God is. John is preaching in this wilderness, this place of loneliness. In all the region, they come to him. He's preaching this doctrine of repentance. He says the reason why he is preaching is that the kingdom of God is at hand. In other words, the kingdom of heaven is near. The kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is kind of interchangeable in the narrative of the text, though there is some distinction. But the essence of it is the kingdom of heaven is near. In other words, God is about to establish his kingdom. And the prophet Isaiah, he prophesied that there's going to be this voice, the voice of one, just one, not a multitude of voices, the voice of just one crying out in the wilderness because most of the time there's only but one person out there when it's out there. He's going to be crying out in the wilderness. He's going to be expressing, here is time for you to repent, for you to change your heart, your mind, your spirit, and turn to God. The essence of it is to prepare the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord. The way of the Lord. I, I, I'm curious when I see phrases like that in Scripture. So I, 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 you know, I searched the phrase, and they're and, and they're 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 particularly. Uh, I think I, I think I, I come up with seventeen of just that phrase. Seventeen? Oh, it's more than seventeen. It's twenty-one. You want me to read them all? Twenty-two. No. <laughs> well, let me check. Let, let, let me just let me pick one or two of them. Here's one in Genesis eighteen nineteen. They're speaking of Abraham. God says, for I know him, and he will command his children and his household after him. And they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice, judgment. The Lord will bring upon Abraham that the, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham all that all that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Here's the passage. The way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of thee. But to do justice, it is right treating of your neighbor. It, it, is, it is to love the person. And I know some people, some people, they're unlovely. I mean, most of the time they're in your family too, you know. It's, it's that uncle, that, that aunt, that, that brother. Oh, man, did they, family reunion, oh, they coming, oh, man, I don't want to be about Loving the unlovable, loving the person who, who, who you know, th that, I just don't want to be bothered with them. I know you don't want to be bothered with them, but let me put it to you this way. It is a soul which Christ has died. Jesus loves them. Jesus is concerned about them, and he's concerned about their eternal soul. And far be it from you or I to dismiss the fact that Jesus died for them. To do justice, 
to love mercy, to have a sense of compassion about other people. You know what the world would be like? I mean, just, 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 let's take one day, one day, one day, a clear across, maybe just Indianapolis, maybe just even Speedway. Everybody just show mercy. Wow. And, 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 and you know, you would say, well, Pastor, you know, maybe the church. Yeah, just the church. One day in Speedway, everybody just show mercy. Every church member, every person who's called by his name would extend mercy to somebody. Don't cut them off on the freeway. Don't jump in line at, before them at the grocery store. Speak a kind word. Don't give them the middle finger. Oh, yeah. Christians do that sometimes. We forget sometimes that we are to exemplify Christ, that we need to show the nature of Christ, that the, that the spirit of God has, has been placed in our heart and it transform us. We, we walk sometimes not after, not after the spirit that the Bible tells us to walk after the spirit, but sometimes we just walk in the, the naturalness of our fleshly mind and we do those fleshly things. But what would happen if we would do justice, if we would love mercy, and if we would walk humbly, with our God. That is the way of the Lord. And John is preaching. Repent. By the way, he's the forerunner. He, he, he is the one that goes before Jesus is coming. He, he, he stands uh, above the crowd. He is, he is making the pathway of the Lord straight. It, 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 it is God's highway. And it's a highway into the hearts and the lives of God's people. It's a straight path. All the crooked places leveled out. The hills and the mountains, the valleys, but they don't mean much because God wants a direct, a direct, a direct path to the heart of his people. The way of the Lord is what he's preaching. Make his path straight. It's a highway for our God. And as he begins to preach this message, and those who are hearing them, they're being baptized. Baptism was what the Jewish nation did as they had proselytes. Everybody wasn't born a Jew, but they might want to be have part of the covenant of grace that the, the Jewish nation had. And so they would take proselytes and they would baptize them. It's an identification that you are now a believer. It doesn't really matter in this country because we can baptize. In fact, we baptize babies. We believe in that. By the way, there's nothing wrong with it either, baptizing babies, just to let you know. So, Pastor, what do you mean? Well, it's a symbol of our Christianity. I mean, baptize babies like an Orthodox Jew would uh, 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 circumcise their child. We put them under the covenant of baptism where we pray for them and, and baptize them into the church. We know eventually they have to make a decision for Christ, but we have committed ourselves to bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, and we baptize them into the faith. We baptize them into the church. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with giving the next generation a, a, a legacy of your faith. The, the, the problem with the church today, just take a good look around you and see all the empty seats. The problem with the church today is we have not committed to show our legacy of faith to the next generation. That's the problem with the church. Why aren't young people coming to church? Because we showed them religion. We, we've shown them the essence of having a social gospel, of working in the kingdom, but we haven't given them a relationship with God. And consequently, if you grow up without a relationship with God, you will not only grow away from him, you will grow away from the church and away from anything religious. Because after all, the good works that we do here, you can do those in the world. But the difference in the Christian's heart is that they have a relationship with God, is that God is within them. They realize that God is within them. And they have this sense of, I have a way before the Lord. I am honoring him and giving him all. Another passage out of this text. This speaks of uh, Jehoshaphat. Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 17, 6 says this of Jehoshaphat. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. 
Moreover, he took away the high places of the groves of Judah. In other words, of all the kings that, you know, and, and, and it was constantly kings would, would do things. They would come to power and they would forget God and they would, oh, you know, let's, let's have a sacrifice to Baal. Let's do this. Let's have an idol. By the way, just, just to let you know, anything in your life that you look to other than God, including your horoscope, if you read your horoscope and don't read your Bible, you got a problem. I'm going to just be honest with you. I'm honest with you. If you read your horoscope and you haven't read your Bible, this is our guidebook. The horoscope is not our guidebook. The Bible, thus saith the Lord, is what we're to live by. And, and when, we, when we take up everything else to put before God, that becomes our idol. And the kings of the Old Testament oftentimes would, 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 would forsake the, temp, the temple of God and they would build an altar or, 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 or grow to, to, to one of the idols, particularly Baal, and they would begin to worship him. They would bring in other people. And it's the reason why, you know, people say, well, well God didn't like mixed marriages. Well, no, it's not so much he didn't like mixed marriages. What he didn't like is that you, uh, other nations, would come in and they would bring their gods and you would begin to worship their gods. Now, if someone comes to the church and they, and they want to bring their gods, God, I, I got a problem with that. When we stop worshiping Jesus here, I'm done. I'm just going to be honest with you. When we stop lifting up, look, you can't lift up Pastor Jones because Pastor Jones will fail you. Pastor Jones is flesh and blood. Pastor Jones didn't save anybody. He didn't die on the cross for anybody. But if we lift up Jesus, Jesus says, if I and I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto thee. He has the power to save, to transform, to make lives anew. Jesus loves you. Pastor Jones might love you sometime. Might not like you at all, but, you know. <laughs> but Jesus loves you. And, and he's died for you. And so when we come to church, we come to worship him. We come to lift him up. And the life of every believer, I don't care who you are or how long you've been in the church, if you are not lifting up Jesus, what's wrong with the church? We don't lift up Jesus. We lift up our social gospel. We don't lift up Jesus. Nothing wrong with our social gospel. Don't forget to understand me. We ought to do good works. Yes, we should. We ought to be ministering to our communities. Yes, we should. We ought to be feeding the hungry and, and, and looking out for the poorest. Yes, we should. We should do all those things. But in the process of doing all those things, do not forget Jesus is the reason. By the way, he's the reason for the season, too. Huh? It's his birthday. I know you don't give a gift to everybody. Everybody you know, every loved one, grandchild, spouse, etc. Give a gift to Jesus. And this morning, if you can give him anything, give him your life. Make a straight path to the Lord. Repent, which is the essence of one turning away from their sin. Having a change of heart and a change of mind. I like the way the Amplified put it. Here's, here's the words in the Amplified. The Amplified text says it like this. Repent. Change your inner self. Your old way of thinking. Regrets. Regret the past sins. Live your life in a way that proves repentance. Seek God's purpose for your life. For God's kingdom is at hand. See, because here's the reality. The sins that we have, well, we, we, we categorize them, and, and, and we have different categories, categories of sin. And then the, there's also the compromise that each, and other, each one of us individually will allow in our lives. By the way, none of us is perfect. I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not perfect. And, and, and what might be sinful to you may not be sinful to me. In fact, I, I normally tell people like this, I can't live by your convictions, and you should try to live by mine. My convictions are my convictions. I have them for various reasons, and, and, and most of which I try to find them in the Word of God to have a conviction, and I try to live by that. But you can't live by my convictions, and I shouldn't be expected to live by your convictions. The problem with one, most of us in the religious faith is that we have convictions, and we think everybody should live by our convictions. Well, that's not going to happen. Just point blank. It ain't going to happen. But your convictions are not as important to me as mine are. And the essence of that is, is this change of life that happens when Christ comes on the inside. 
And we live by his convictions. We live by what the Lord says to us and through us. We live by what the word of God teaches us. And in this particular passage, we live in the essence of this is our wilderness experience and we're traveling through this wilderness experience and we hear the gospel and we respond to the gospel. We respond to the essence of preparing the way of the Lord to have this sense of justice and righteousness and truthfulness, not only with ourselves, but with our fellow man and especially of all between God. Jesus put it to us in this term. If you come to the altar and you bring your gift and you find out that you have all against your brother, or that your brother has ought against you. You are to leave your gift at the altar, go be reconciled to your brother, and then come offer your gift. In other words, when you lift up your prayer before God and you have animosity towards somebody, I'm going to say this to you. Your prayer is not going anywhere. Hit the ceiling, boss it back. Heaven is not open to that. Heaven is open to righteousness. Heaven is open to justice. Heaven is open to that which is right. And when you're right, if you're right with God, the old preacher used to say, if you're right with God, he will fight your battle. We think we should fight our own battle, do our own thing. But the reality of it is that is not the way of the Lord. The way of the Lord is to make his path straight, to level the ground, to make sure that we are living in those ways that proclaim his righteousness, his justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with him. Now, if you're walking in pride, the Bible says God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Humble yourself. That's what the scripture teaches us. Somebody says, well, I'm not going to humble myself. Well, I'm going to remind you of a king called Nebuchadnezzar. He decided he wasn't going to humble himself. In fact, before the words got out of his mouth, he says, this great Babylon that I have built, before the words got out of his mouth, he lost his mind. And for the next three or four years, he lived out in the wilderness. His nails grew like claws. He ate grass, slept on the dew of the ground. I mean, the king lost his mind out of his inability to humble himself. And don't pray that God humble you. Humble yourself. The scripture says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and in due time, God will exalt you. But if you lift yourself up, here's Jesus' words. He that loves his life and saves it will lose it. He that loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it unto life eternal. Humble yourself. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. May your heart, my heart, may all of our hearts be open to what God is doing. A sense of justice and righteousness. A sense of humility. A sense of walking with the God and tearing down all the idols out of our lives. Because God's kingdom was nearer now than when you first believed. Father, we want to thank you this morning for the word of the Lord. Thank you for this prophetic word that came, God, through John, through the prophet Isaiah. We prepare your way in our hearts. And as we observe the Advent season, we are even preparing your way in our hearts and in our lives for the advent of your second coming. We acknowledge, O oh God, that you have come, but we look for you again. A coming that is a coming unto righteousness, a coming unto victory, a coming where you, O oh, oh God, gather all your people, and that Christ will be magnified, and glorified, that the kingdoms of our world will become the kingdoms of Christ. All the things, oh God, that we work for, well, that we work for the treasures of heaven, not the treasures of this world. May our wilderness, our time of trial and test, our sense of loneliness and isolation, may our wilderness experience yield for us a true repentance, a transformation of heart and spirit. May it yield for us, God, that sense of knowing ourselves as well as who you are establishing our own oh God knowing that theology by which you have sent me 
ask in the name of Christ that you would bless your people this day. In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you this morning, to those of you who are watching online as well as you who are in the sanctuary, and anyone who may hear the sound of my voice, if you do not know Jesus, if you have not experienced the transformation that he brings, well, it's about time. The Bible says the day you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Don't turn away, but respond. Say yes to the way of the Lord. Say yes to Jesus. Amen. Okay. Our worship leaders are going to join us in a song. And if you're in need of prayer, the altar is open. Maybe we need to repent. Turn from our wicked ways. Then God will hear from heaven. He'll forgive the sin. He'll heal the land. Amen. <laughs> blessing us. He keeps blessing us. On the essence of Advent, don't forget your prayers. Talking to Jesus. Calling on Emmanuel. 
Don't forget to prepare in your heart a way to the Lord. Amen. The power of Christ be with you. The Holy Spirit be to guide you. And the anointing of God, well, it breaks every yoke. So may God's anointing be upon you. Amen. Amen. People of God, amen. 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 Blessings.
his glory every knee will bow at your throne to worship you will be exalted oh god and your kingdom shall not pass away oh ancient of Hallelujah. I'm glad he's the ancient of days. From everlasting to everlasting, he's God, and he knows everything. He knows where you are right now. Even your DNA, God knows it. So you can leave here today with the confidence you have prepared a way for the Lord in your heart and in your spirit. Amen? Go in the strength of your God and be blessed. Walk in a blessing and be a blessing. In Christ's name, amen.